Hey, welcome back. This is, we'll just call this our review for our first quiz here in physics that we're going to do. And, and, and really this, we're going to have a couple things. We need to be able to do conversions. And by conversions, specifically, I mean things with either cubes or squares in the conversions and things with rates in there, like miles per hour. And then the only other big thing that we're really going to have on that quiz, it's going to be some basic problems using trigonometry that we're going to have. And I'll try and make a halfway decent little review out of this as we go through at this point. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see what we can get into here. So first thing, let's, the most basic thing would be this. Make sure that if you had a problem that somebody told you 40 miles per hour, that you could convert that to meters per second. We, that, that's something we do all the time in physics. And the trick is just here. When you do your conversion, draw your line, put your X, but write it like this so that hours is on bottom and miles is on top. And now it's pretty much as simple as do your, you know, do your conversions. There's 5,280 feet in one mile. And then we can go back and say, well, there's 3.281 feet in the meter. And that's pretty much, we could go through and we could mark out. I don't usually do that, but we could go back, miles cancel, feet cancel, and it leaves us with meters for a unit. Now, in terms of the hours things, you just got to think, when you're looking at hours, there's 3,600 seconds in one hour. And so the big thing here is, where, where's the 3600 going to go? Is it going to go in the top or the bottom of this last step out here? Well, here's the thing. If there's hours on bottom here, then that means here, hours has to be on top here in 3600 seconds on the bottom, and we're done with it. And so that's really all that we've got to kind of do to halfway figure this out. See if I can find my calculator and pull this over here. So let's see what we can't do here. So 40 times 5,280. So good grief. So that's 211,200. So 211,200 on top divided by, where did my calculator go? What we have on bottom, 3.281 to 81 times 3600 equals 11811, 11811. Good grief, I think going to be huge. So I kind of like putting them in my calculators all at once, to be honest. Plus a Windows calculator actually kind of stinks compared to like our scientific calculator. 11,200 divided by 11,811. And so it looks like I got 17.8 meters per second. So there's my answer for that. Now, I would say another thing that you ought to be able to do is to do like the square cube conversions. So maybe something as simple as if I gave you 15 foot square, could you change that to centimeters square? Oh, let's try that. Centimeters square. Could you do that? Well, all you'd need to do is write down your 15 foot square, draw your line, put your X, draw your line. Now just think to yourself, how would you normally do this conversion? Well, usually what you do is change to inches, probably, and then centimeters. Well, that's still no problem. It's just when you do your conversions, normally you'd go in and be like, okay, there's 12 inches in one foot. Well, you're not that far off. It's just that in this problem, we're doing square conversions. So instead of 12, we're not going to do 12 because we're doing squares. So we're going to do 12 times 12. So our conversion is going to be 144 inches square to foot square. And that's how we're going to end up doing this one. So then the same thing. If you want to get to a centimeter square, if 
if you want to do that, normally you would say that there's 2.54 centimeters square in an inch square. Or excuse me, centimeters per inch. So if you want to do it by squares, just square them. 2.54 square is 6.45. So there'd be 6.45 centimeters square in one inch square. So let's just come back over here now. One inch square goes on bottom. 6.45 goes on the top. Multiply out the bottom and the top. One on bottom. 15 times 144 times 6.45. Wow, check that out. 13,932. So that means there's 13,932 centimeters square in a foot square. So that kind of gives you a good little basic idea of a problem. Um, let's see, what else can we come up with? What about if we gave you like 15, 15 feet cubed per minute? So let's make a rate out of it. And we changed it to yards cubed per second. Well, that's not too bad. It's a rate. That's the big thing. This is a rate because you've got something per minute, per second, per hour. And all that means when it's a rate, when you set it up, you write 15 foot cube over minute. You set it up like a rate. And now we'll just go through and do our conversions. Now, this is cubed. So all we're going to do is, normally if you wanted to go feet to yard, what would you do? Well, normally if you wanted to go feet to yard, you'd be like, well, there's three feet in one yard. And you'd be like, bam, there's my conversion factor. Well, you're not far off. It's just we're doing it by cubes. So you need to cube your conversion factor. So three cubed is 27. So there's 27 foot cubed and a yard cubed. So just cube your conversions. And one more step. We want to go two seconds, it says up here. So all we're going to do is write 60 seconds on bottom, one minute on top. If you're trying to figure out exactly why we're writing it like that, it's so everything cancels. Because look, foot cubed cancels foot cubed. And now minute cancels minute. Things have to be things have to be across from each other in order to cancel. So if you look, we've got this one done. So in the case of this one, it's 15 over 27 times 60, 1620. Divide that 15 divided by 1620, and we have got point. Zero zero nine two six. What is this? Yards cube per second. So there we are. Answer to that one. All right. Let's do now some kind of a basic trig problem just to make sure that you're feeling pretty good about that. So a basic triangle. Let's draw us a nice little triangle here. Do, 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 do. So there's just a basic triangle. Uh, let's go in here in the corner. Let's make this theta unknown. In other words, I don't know what that is. Let's make this 10, this side 15, which means your teacher now would probably, especially if your teacher is me, your teacher's probably going to want to know what is this other side probably going to want to know this angle down here and this other angle up at the top is what they're going to be asking. Well, let's do something. Let's kind of break this thing down. Uh, if this angle is theta, that means that this side is the opposite, this side is the adjacent, and then that 15 is the hypotenuse. So if I'm trying to find this theta, I need to go back to my trig function. So, ka, toa, sine, cosine, tangent. So I need to go back to my trig functions. Which trig function? I've got opposite and hypotenuse. Well, that's sine. So if I want to find that angle, I'm going to write it down. I always write my equations. I'm a good boy. 
opposite over hypotenuse. And now I'm trying to find theta. So I'm going to divide both sides by sine, which doesn't mean much except notation-wise. It means we're going to take an inverse sine. So I'm going to take an inverse sine of 10 over 15. Now, for most of you, it just means in your calculators, you're going to hit a shift or probably a second button before you hit your sign button in your calculator. And you ought to see it pop up that little sign negative one in there. Be one. So put that into your calculator. Sign negative one. I'm doing it right now in mine. Sign negative one of 10 over 15 or two thirds if you like. And I've got 41.8 degrees. So there is the angle that it gives me. So that means the angle down in the bottom corner. So I'm going to go in there and try and fix this. So the angle down here is 41.8 degrees. Well, if this is a right triangle, that means this other angle in the other corner, all you'd have to do is take 90 minus 41.8. So 90 minus 41.8 is 48.2. Oh, I'm loving this. I'm having a ball now. This should be illegal. It's so much fun. So the other angle is 48.2. So I got both angles now. The only thing I haven't figured out is what is this unknown side down here? And reality is I could use, I could use both. Let's see. What are the different ways I could do this? I want to see what we can do here. Hmm, let's see. We're looking for adjacent. So how could we find the adjacent side? We could find it by using cosine A over H. We could find it by using tangent opposite over adjacent. Or we could use Pythagorean. So I know what you're saying. So which way do you want to do it? Well, I got an idea. Let's try it all three ways. Let's see, cosine, we know the angle, and so that would be cosine of 41.8 equals adjacent over the hypotenuse. Let's see, using tangent, it would be tangent of 41.8 equals the opposite, which was 10 over the adjacent. Now, I'm going to say you need to be able to use any one of these equations. Uh, using Pythagorean theorem, if you're doing Pythagorean on this, let's see, this would be your R side, this would be your X, and this would be your Y axis. So if we're going to do Pythagorean, it's basically going to be 15 square equals X square plus, where are we at? 10 square. So every one of these are possible ways to get this answer. Well, let's let's go through and do them. Let's see. Down here, we would times both sides by 15. And so 15 times cosine 41.8 equals 11.2. So according to this method, that side is 11.2. Well, let's try this. Let's try this one over here now. Well, on this one, we're going to have to do some more algebra. We're going to have to times both sides by a. So we end up with a tangent 41.8 equals 10. And then you're going to have to go back and divide both sides by tangent of 41.8. Do our math. So. Ah, you scrolled too far out of the way. So let's see. A doing this would be 10 divided by tangent 41.8. And that's 11.2. So, so far, every way's worked out right. Well, we got one more. Let's do this Pythagorean up here. So this ends up being 15 square. We're going to have to subtract... 10 square from both sides, x square. So we end up with 15 square minus 10 
square, which would be 100, of course. So that's 125 equals x squared. And now you need to take a square root of both sides, 125. So square root 125 is, oh my goodness, 11.2. So no matter how we did it, we found that the missing side was 11.2. So you got a lot of variation in how you get those results in this problem. Um, we'll do one more problem just for the heck of it. See what we can come up with here. Let's do this a line. Do, do, do. Make us a basic right triangle in here. So there's my basic right triangle. This time though, let's give us an angle of 30 degrees. Make it kind of simple and let's get one side and that's all we should need. Let's pick a side. Let's make this side 10. And at this point, you should be able to, of course, tell me the other angle. Well, of course, if the one angle's 30, the other angle's got to be 60, so that's kind of easy. Of course, it's right triangle. Uh, let's see. I also want you to be able to tell me what both of these are, these other two sides. So let's just go ahead and let's label it for sine, cosine, tangent. So let's get ready. Here we go. So ka toa, sine, cosine, tangent. So this would be my adjacent, this is my opposite, and this is my hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and see. If I want to find the hypotenuse and I've got the adjacent, I need a trig function that's got a and h. Well, that's cosine. Cosine theta is equal to a over h. And I've got everything I need. This is going to end up being cosine of 30 equals 10 over h. Well, multiply both sides by h and divide by cosine 30. So h would be 10 over cosine 30. Now let's plug that in our calculator. 10 divided by cosine 30. And I got 11.5. I've also gotten five text messages vibrating me in the last 17, wow, 17 minutes. Wow, this video is getting long. But anyway, let's try and cut this down right now. So now we've got our H. So this is 11.5. And now if you want that opposite side, you could either use Sokotoa or you could even use uh, Pythagorean again if you wanted to. Uh, I'm going to use Sokotoa. I've got O and A, so I'm just going to write tangent. 30 equals opposite over 10. So all I got to do to work this out is 10 tangent 30, multiply both sides by 10. That's my opposite. So 10 tangent 30, I wish you could see this calculator, 5.8. And there is my last side is 5.8. Anyway, if you feel pretty confident doing this kind of stuff, tomorrow you should be very good, or whenever it is, or if you just took watch this video for fun. Anyway, that's 18 minutes, which is way too long for me to still be interested. So I'll just leave you with a big thing of smiley faces, and maybe a her, and a couple of eyeballs. Oops, said two eyeballs. Anyway, bye, y'all.